As a prerequisite to this tutorial, please watch all Trials Editor tutorials from the official Red Links YouTube. A link to a playlist can be found in the description below. Thank you! To start making an FPS today, we're going to load up the skill game template from last video. If you haven't seen that video, there'll be an annotation on screen now, or you can check the description. All FPSs in Trials use some form of a sphere. I normally use the custom collision sphere under common physics tools. Go ahead and spawn a custom collision in and change it to variation 6 for a sphere. Set the size to something you desire. I normally set it to 2 meters. Go ahead and turn the physics on for this custom collision as we want our character to move. Under advanced physics we're going to change a few things. The mass of the sphere should be set to 100 kilograms. This weight will be easy when used in math calculations later. Set the friction of the sphere to be zero so it smoothly glides over objects. Set the linear dampening to 50 and the angular dampening to 100 so the object doesn't roll too much. Disable global dampening to disable air effects on the sphere. Restitution is the amounts of bounce on our object. Set this to zero so our character doesn't bounce too much. Buoyancy is fine at 100, but we want to disable the world gravity as we want a custom gravity. Set the object gravity to something negative so that it is pulled towards the ground. I usually set mine to negative 500. The rest of the options under advanced physics are fine as is. Physics type default simply moves it in the default manner. Collision sound will make sounds with other objects. Our object is not fast so do not select fast object. And reset position and checkpoint restart is fine with checkpoints. Press the back button to check physics on your object. Make sure it falls to the ground. We also want our camera to follow our object so we can monitor it. Under track settings, go to game mode settings and select our game character as our sphere. Press A on select game character and press A on our sphere. It should move the camera closer to your sphere. We're now going to change some settings in the camera. Press up to get the object properties of the camera and set the FOV to something you like. I normally use 60. Under advanced camera settings, turn off assisted. Assisted only moves the camera and helps the camera when riding on trials maps. We don't need this. Follow game character is good as we want it to follow our sphere, but the position behavior should be keep position. Change this in target behavior as well and set the interpolation of both to be 100 so we get a smooth change. The rest of these effects are fine as is. You can change them at your discretion. These simply change the effect of the camera, Color tint adds a tint to the camera. Exposure exposes the amount of light to the camera. And adaptive brightness and depth of field have to do with how shadows and depth is at large distances. You can change these whenever you like. Go ahead and press the back button to check physics. Your camera should follow your game character or sphere now. One of the most important things about the sphere is that it continues to move. Go ahead and snap your game character or sphere to the world axis by pressing right stick. You can press right stick again to snap the angles. Also snap the physics bubble, the small red box near your game character. Under its object properties, change the position behavior to keep position and change the size of your physics bubble to something smaller. I usually use 5 meters. The physics bubble makes it so that physics objects within the physics bubble can be moved. This way, it is always near our game character. The show visualization options will keep this red outline around it. This target here changes where the target of our default blue camera will look. You can save, change this to whatever you like, but I usually keep it near the game character so we can see what we're doing when testing the track. Another important thing about our game character is its position. Under triggers and events data sources, spawn in an object info data source. This contains info on a certain object within the game world. Go ahead and copy three of these out, as these will contain the position of our character. Select all three, and under their object property tabs, select object, press A, and then press A again on our sphere. This will now get the position of the sphere. We do not want all X position though, so go ahead and change the second position to position Y and the third position to position Z. These pertain to the three axis in the world coordinate system. We use these coordinates within something called an object position event. Object position events move object based on three coordinates. Go ahead and spawn one in now. In order to move though, we need a trigger to trigger an event. 
Under triggers get an interval trigger. Interval trigger sends out an impulse at a set interval. Go ahead and set that interval to be one game tick and select the event filter to be our object position event. This will now send impulses to our object position event. Under object position event, you're going to deselect modify rotation. We'll get to this later. Turn off local as we want global coordinates and under position X, press Y to assign it a value and assign it to your first position X. Assign position Y to position Y and assign position Z to position Z. This will now move something pertaining to the game character's coordinates. This select event target are going to be the targets that will be moved. The target that we want to move is an area effector. Spawn one in now, they are common area effector objects. Go ahead and snap it to your coordinate system and rotate it so that the arrow is facing forward. Under its object property tabs, you're going to want to change the size of the area effector to something smaller. I usually keep mine on the smallest size, 0 0.10 meters. Under force settings, you want to leave everything alone except for the fade. Turn the fade down to zero. Under affected objects, we only want to affect our sphere. So deselect all the other objects and under select object instances, press A and then press A again on our sphere. This will make it so the area effector only pushes our sphere. Copy another area effector and rotate it 90 degrees to the right. This represents forward movement and sideways movement when we get to the joystick. Now under the object position event you made just a second ago, press A on it and under select event targets, assign the event target to be the two area effectors. This object position event, when it receives impulses, will now move these two area effectors near your game character or sphere. Notice how they are assigned to the game character's position and now they move with the game character. We don't want it to move in a set speed though, we want it to be modifiable by the joystick on the Xbox controller. Under triggers and events data sources, spawn in a game variable data source. These contain data on things in the game as well as the controller and bike speed and other variables. Spawn two of these in as we need two values vertical and horizontal. Set the first to be left stick vertical value and set the second to be left stick horizontal value. These now contain the values of the joystick of the Xbox controller. We're also going to need to multiply these. Get out a two input operator operator and go ahead and spawn one in near the vertical value. These perform basic operations such as add, subtract, multiply, divide. We're going to use multiply. Select operand 1 to be our vertical value of our left stick and operand 2 to be some value within the 1000 range. I usually like to use 1200. Once you have placed your value here, you can copy it over for your left stick horizontal value and reassign the first operator. Just press Y to copy, press A to place. You can press right stick to snap to the game grid and go ahead and reassign operand 1 to horizontal value. Under our arrow that is facing forward, press A and open its object property tabs, force settings, directional force, and assign the directional force to our multiplied value. Do the same for horizontal value. This will, this will act as if the left stick is changing the directional force of each of our area effectors while in game. To test this out, press the start button to bring up your start menu and go ahead and click on test track. Now you should see that as you move your left stick, you move the character in the game world. If you want to see editor objects while testing, press start and change the show editor icons to enabled. You should now be able to see your arrows and blue custom collision sphere while testing. You can go ahead and test this around and you'll notice that each of the arrows correspond to your left joystick values and the character moves in the corresponding directions. We're now going to add a yellow custom camera which will serve as our new main camera. Spawn one in from the common objects tab under the game section and snap it near your other objects. Under the camera's object properties, change the camera type to cut and the range to 0.1 meters. This is done because no other cameras will be used. Under advanced camera settings, change the interpolation amount to zero, since this will be the only camera, but change the interpolation speed to 100 as this camera will be moved. 
select Uses Game Camera to make this our new main camera. Remember to always keep your tool cards organized, as skill games can get pretty complex. I'm moving these tool cards that concern the left joystick towards the area of vectors so that everything can be grouped together by their use. In order to move our camera, we're going to need another object position event. Spawn another one from the Triggers and Events tab under the Events section, and snap it near your other object position event. We want our camera to be located on top of our sphere, so we also have to do some more math. Spawn in a two input operator from the operations section. Set the first operand to be our sphere's Y coordinate, and set the second operand to be one. This will add one unit to our sphere's Y coordinate, or up and down coordinate, effectively placing our game camera on top of the sphere. Under the object position event, go ahead and deselect local and turn off modify rotation. Set the position X to be our sphere's X coordinate, set the position Y to be our new additive Y coordinate, and set the position Z to be our sphere's Z coordinate. Select event target to be our camera. Under our first object position event, select event filter to be our second object position event. This will pass the impulse down the chain from interval trigger to first object position event and finally to second object position event. Go ahead and test your track from the start menu. You should notice that the camera follows your character in a first person perspective now. We're now going to rotate the camera. Spawn in a game variable data source under the data sources section and set it to right stick vertical value. Create a second one and set it to right stick horizontal value. These will now contain the movement directions of the right joystick. We need to modify these values before using them. Spawn in a two input operator and set the type to multiply. Set operand 1 to be our right stick vertical value and set operand 2 to be a value less than 1. Do the same thing for right stick horizontal value. The second operand represents sensitivity, with a smaller value being a lower sensitivity and a larger value being a higher sensitivity. We also need two set value events. Spawn them in from the events section. Set value events modify variable data sources. Spawn in two variable data sources from the data sources section. Variable data sources are like holders for numbers where you can modify the number and store it for later use. Under the set value event, change the type to decrease, set the value to be our multiplied vertical value, and set the event target to be our first variable data source. Do the same thing for our second set value event. These set value events will now decrease our variable data sources by the multiplied joystick values. These variable data sources represent yaw and pitch of our camera. Be sure to select event filter from our second object position event to be our first set value event and select event filter from that set value event to be our last set value event. This will now pass the impulse along the chain from interval trigger all the way down to our last set value event. Under the second object position event, turn on modify rotation, deselect local, and select set rotation. This will now set the camera's rotation based off the global angle system. Set yaw to be our second variable data source. Yaw is side to side rotation. Set pitch to be our first variable data source. Pitch is up and down rotation. Go ahead and test your track from the start menu. Your camera should now rotate left, right, up and down based on your right joystick, but you will notice the blue area vectors do not turn with you. We're going to fix this. Again, remember to keep your tool cards organized so that you can easily modify and understand your logic chains. I'm going to move these set value events up so that they are in line with the other events. I will place this interval trigger away from the events it sends impulses to. I'm also going to move the position data near the object it is monitoring and move the camera near its object position event. Always try to keep things together based off their uses. 
In order to move the blue area effectors correctly, we need two separate object position events. Simply copy the first object position event to get a second. Make sure to send the impulses down to your new object position event by selecting Event Filter from your first object position event to your new one. Since one of the area effectors is rotated sideways, we need to do some more math. Spawn in a two input operator from the operations section. Set the first operand to be our second variable data source, which represents yaw or side to side rotation. We need to subtract 90 degrees from our yaw, so set the type to be subtract and set the second operand to be 90. Under your new object position event, turn on modify rotation, turn off local, and turn on set rotation. Set the yaw to be our new subtracted yaw and set the pitch to be exactly 90 so that the area effector is tilted forward. Under your first object position event, do the same thing. Turn on modify rotation, turn off local, and turn on set rotation. This time though, set the yaw to be the second variable data source, which is our original yaw value. Set the pitch to be exactly 90 as well. We want each object position event to move only one area effector, so under your first object position event, select event target. Press X to remove all targets, then press A only on the forward facing area effector. Do the same thing for your new object position event. Select event target, press X to remove all targets, then press A only on the side facing arrow. You can now test the track out from the start menu. Your camera and area effector should now turn when you turn and you should move in that direction. Alrighty, that's it. The basics of your FPS character are done. I would go ahead and save this off as an FPS template so you could use it at a later time and you could uh, turn this into something else, a horror map, a shooter, whatever you wanted. Just add the objects all around it. Um, we're going to add in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably add some jumping mechanics, some running mechanics, maybe a little bit of strafing for this FPS character. And if uh, you guys have any other tutorials you want me to do, leave them down in the comments below. I've been Pneumatic Bog, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.